After an extensive restoration, Southwoods Museum at Paraparaumu have finally managed to get their 1937 Cord 810 Phaeton on the road. A very rare car, cords were only built in very small numbers and the convertibles even rarer still. This particular example arrived from the UK in the early 1960s in very decrepit state, including having the wrong motor in it, it had a flathead Ford V8 installed backwards as that's where it needs to be to run the transmission in these very unusual front wheel drive cars. The car is now restored back to its original state with the correct 289cc Lycoming V8 engine in it running the semi-automatic transmission at the front of the car. Cord were the first front wheel drive American cars with the L29 introduced in 1929. The 810 is an entirely new design known as the Coffin Nose Cord because of the unmistakable front to it designed by legendary American designer Gordon Burring who specifically wanted to get away from the traditional chrome-plated radiator grill look of American cars up until that time. It's very distinctive. It's also the first American car to feature retractable headlights. They're actually the landing lights off a Stinson aircraft, hand operated by hand cranks on the dash, a separate crank for each side of the car. So uh, to put the headlights on you need to wind both up separately, which means either leaning across the car or having a cooperative passenger. The Cord was the middle range car from the Auburn Cord Duesenberg range, the Auburn being not so much their lowest price car as they were a very expensive car but their sporting one, the Duesenberg which was the car of millionaires and movie stars and the Cord was really the car that sat in the middle with the more interesting looking design, far more flamboyant looking car than the Duesenberg, only ever made in very small numbers, a very expensive car and uh, popular with collectors around the world now. The engine turned alloy dashboard looking like it's out of an aircraft, the pontoon mud guards, the fact the car doesn't have a separate chassis, it has independent front suspension, it sits so low that there's, that there's no need for running boards, you step down to get into it. All of these things in 1936 when the car first was uh, shown to the public were way, way ahead of its time. The car was rushed into production. They needed to make 100 cars to qualify for the New York Motor Show at the end of 1935. It was met with huge acclaim, obviously it looked like no other car there. The cord stand was absolutely mobbed by customers and they took hundreds and hundreds of orders on the day even though the car really wasn't developed enough. Unfortunately what then happened is that many of the customers who paid an awful lot of money for the car were really having to do some of the development for the factory as well, especially with that troublesome semi-automatic transmission. It works off a small little lever just off to the side of the gear lever, just work with two fingers and it works a um, semi-hydraulic slash electrical shifting device on the front of the transmission to change gears. Certainly when compared with the uh, some of the heavy clutches and the crash boxes which were still only starting to go out of vogue at the time, a very very revolutionary idea, um, just possibly needed a little bit more development and a little more money to spend on it. But whichever way you look at it, the Cord, especially in the convertible form, is a particularly stunning looking motor car and um, something that is just out of this world when you compare with anything else from the era. And uh, Southwoods have done a great job in restoring it and making it look really as it would have the day it left the factory. Uh, well worth going to see the museum, even if it's just to have a look at the Cord on display.